tell the rules to bugger off start adding these things either side of your training if you're willing to go out there and train like an animal and you're going to go push and you're not going to sort of jog easy every day and you're going to start giving your training a bit of intent and you're going to do more volume at specific intensities it's going to help your next race result go forward you absolutely must be willing to put in time to good nutrition good sleep good hydration, recovery strategies, your foam roll and Epsom baths, ice baths. You absolutely must be focusing on your nutrition, eating within X amount of time of training. Are you prepping the day before your nutrition, etc.? Are you looking after your psychology? What if you're getting too tired? Are you gonna meditate at night? Are you gonna journal at night? In your journal, the night before training, are you going to write, don't run too fast tomorrow, make sure it's steady and don't turn a steady run into a marathon or a half marathon type effort. Use your journal, use your nutrition stuff, use your recovery stuff, get good sleep, hydrate and you will likely be able to handle far more training at intensities that will move you forward than the 80-20 model. So I posted a video, it was all about steady running. I was out on the run. I thought it was a brilliant way to improve people's running. I trained for a marathon, I trained with Mo Farah, I trained with Bashir Abdi, Olympic medalist, double Olympic champions, Andrew Butchard, world and Olympic finalist. We ran steady almost every day. Steady is that area between, you've got easy recovery, and then you've got marathon effort, and then you've got you know, intervals, 10K, half marathon above that. I'm calling steady that area between very easy, slow for recovery and let's say marathon effort. It used to be known as quite a gray area and for much of my career, I thought it was a pretty gray area. But the more I think about times in my life that I've implemented steady running, I've actually really improved. Now the bottom line of this video is Recovery is the most important aspect. I'm not, you know, contradicting myself. I'm not doing any of that. If you get injured, you're no use to anybody. Not your next race, not yourself, probably not your loved ones at home because you're gonna be in a bad mood. So you do not want to get injured. That being said, it is my belief, and from what I'm noticing from other athletes, when I was at university, there was females that trained at the university. You know, you live in split dorms, you get to see what they're doing. These ladies were putting in probably 60% of their week above that sort of steady line. They weren't running, you know, there was no 80-20 model. And you're talking world junior medalists, finalists at world juniors, making European cross countries, medals at European cross countries. These ladies were phenomenal. I guess I learned then of course, if every single day you could handle threshold, threshold, tempo, hills, intervals, all the rest of it, well then of course you'd be an absolute titan. But we can't always handle all of that. So what you wanna do is have a look at your current training and you want to have a think about what can I handle right now? What is my current breakdown? If you wanna call it an 80-20 model, fine, I have absolutely no issue with that. What I'd rather you call it is, this is my training. And you think of yourself, you think of exactly what you're training for, and you start to keep a record of how much of your week is dedicated to easy recovery, how much of your week is dedicated to hills, how much of your week is dedicated to interval training, and start to keep a record of how you're breaking that up, and then what those sort of percentage differences are. The reason I said you could rip the 80-20 model up is because I genuinely believe that every athlete is different. And what if your niche, so to speak, what if the reason you're gonna be an absolute beast and run personal bests and all these things is because you can handle more than that 80-20? I'm not gonna start bashing this 80-20 idea, but it's probably directed at the mass if you took a pool of people that were staying healthy and progressing in sport, it's likely that this 80-20 is roughly where it's gonna be at, where they believe the cutoff is, where they believe the threshold is. But I say what the 
threshold is, and I mean like if the general pool of people, and you test 10,000 people, you test 100,000 people, and it says, if you stick to this 80-20 model, you know, you, you might not pick up injuries, you might not this, that, or the other, they cannot speak for you. I'm sorry. They cannot speak for you specifically. You, the watcher right now, they cannot speak on your behalf. Your greatest asset might be that you can do, I don't know, 60-40, 50-50. I don't know the answer. You have to know the answer. So what you do is you put on your big whiteboard, you put on the left hand side, you put what I currently do, and then you put on the right side, what might help me? Could I add some stuff in there? Could I add a bit more intensity? Could I add a bit more volume? The reason you want to add some of this like more percentage of your week at a higher intensity is because that's what's going to get you specifically ready for the races that are coming up. What happens now is if you're doing too much just easy running, too much like recovery stuff, it will help your fitness, but fitness should be a curse word. To get specifically ready for a race, whether it's a 5K, whether it's a 10K, whether it's a half marathon, whether it's a marathon, you need to be specifically fit for that race. It's that simple. The fittest person doesn't win the race. The person that's best prepared specifically for that event wins the race. Threshold work, interval work, hill training, all these kinds of sessions, that's what's going to help the body move forward, the physiology move forward. That's what helps your physiology graph shift to the right. That's what helps your fitness in terms of specific fitness get to a better place. If you could handle every single day threshold, interval, hills, you would be a beast. The problem is most of us get injured. And so you have to take a step back and you have to say, how could I handle more volume at intensities that will likely prepare me specifically for my next race? Think steady running, think threshold, think intervals, think hills, think of all these things. How could I increase the amount of this kind of training that I can do? What might I have to implement either side of this kind of training to ensure that I don't get injured. And this is where this conversation gets very interesting. This is where we move away from 80-20 and this is where we move to how much are you, the watcher, willing to dedicate either side of your training to perhaps ensure that you can handle a bit more. What if you can handle 25? What if your split can be 75-25 because you're willing to foam roll? You're willing to do some pre-run activation before you leave the house. You're willing to do some mobility. You're willing to do some strength stuff. At home, you're willing to do your rehab that perhaps a physio has given you. Perhaps you're gonna start looking after all this stuff. And when you start looking after all this stuff, maybe, just F and maybe, you can switch to more of a 75-25. I hate the fact that in life we're given these rules. GPS watches set rules. People saying 80 20, best thing in the world, you've already dedicated a rule in your head that says if you go over 20, there's going to be a problem. You've literally already did, like, you've told your brain if you go over 20, there's a problem, like, you've done something wrong. But what if you dedicated way more time that week to recovery? What if you dedicated way more time that month or that cycle of training to strength, to strengthening the areas that are breaking your body down? So many people will listen to these rules. They'll literally listen to this, oh, I have to stick to 80-20, oh, I can't run at these speeds, oh, my Garmin says I can't run at those speeds. Tell it the a way off. Start listening to your body. Start giving your body what it needs. Start putting the things in place that are gonna help your body get better. And some of these things will be home strength, mobility, activation routines. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go to joggingroom.com. There's free activation routines, there's free home mobility, free yoga, free home gym. Go check it out. Start adding those around the training that you're doing and then tell the 80, 20, rip it up, tell it to bugger off. I'm not trying to diss anything. I'm trying to diss that what happens is we set these rules. And the minute you set that rule, the minute that you allow that to be a thing, you'll stop progressing. 
I, the best marathon I ran, which was 209 for the marathon, I ran 209 because I let every single day count. But I was willing to dedicate time, either side of training, to focus on recovery. Recovery for my psychology, recovery for the body physically, good food to help recovery, brilliant hydration up the mountain, in bed at 8.30 every single night, 8.30, 9pm. If you're willing to dedicate the time around the training, you will be able to handle more volume at specific intensities that will allow your next race result to be one of your best yet. It's that simple. Don't allow rules to hold you back. Don't allow these psychological barriers or rules, whatever you want to call them, to hold you back. I'm sure this 80-20 idea is absolutely fantastic, but I can tell you right now, there isn't too many runners in general reaching their full potential following a set of rules. I am going to upload this video. I have no idea if this is a style that people like. So if you like this, comment below. I can do more videos like this at home because of course it's much less effort when I'm out in the run. I know there's no fancy videography, no fancy transitions, no fancy music. It's just me talking. But I'm an Olympic marathon runner. I've dedicated 15 to 20 years of my life to this sport. And if you listen to some of this advice, you will likely move forward. If you listen to some advice, you will likely learn what I learned when I spent two months up a mountain with Mo Farah. You will likely learn what I learned from Andrew Butchard, Olympic and World Finalist. If you listen, you will pick up on things. If you already know too much, well then you'll do what I did 10 to 15 years ago and you'll make the same mistakes for about 5 to 10 years before eventually you listen and realize that Mm, some of these really experienced people, they're not insulting me, they're trying to help. The biggest thing you can take out of today's video is to start focusing on everything around your training, the other 22 to 23 hours of your day, not just the running part, and that's what's going to help you handle more volume at intensities that will move your fitness for the next race, that specific fitness, forward. Like, subscribe, come back, there's plenty more videos. I'm so excited. Take some of this advice on and I really hope it works for you. Mm -hmm.